Number 51. Construct your own problem. So consider a ball tossed over a fence. Construct a problem in which you calculate the ball's needed initial velocity to just clear the fence. Among the things to determine are the height of the fence, the distance uh, to the fence from the point of release of the ball, and the height at which the ball is released. Okay, so uh, let's take a look. I drew a little picture and uh, this will be our problem. So let's say uh, here's a fence, all right, and it's located approximately uh, 10 meters away from the point of release. The point of release here is at the same height, excuse me, the point of release is essentially two meters lower than the height of the fence. So in other words, the height of the fence is two meters. I, had, I have given you the initial angle of uh, release of this ball, all right? And what we are to do is we need to calculate now the initial velocity, all right? So first let's lay out a couple of things. Let's, let's make a little X, not table, but we'll talk about all of our X components here. And then we'll talk about, actually, let me just change the color. We'll talk about all of our X components over here and all of our Y components on this side, all right? So first let's take a look at X. What I'm gonna do first is um, I realize that uh, I have this initial velocity in a certain angle, right? So it's really in two frames, it's in the uh, X and Y uh, frame. So what I wanna do first is I wanna break it up into its components, right? So let's draw this little X component here. Let's call that the initial, I'll call that right there, the initial uh, velocity in the X direction. And then I'll also break it up into the Y, right? So there's the Y component. It's a little bit at an angle. Has to be a, yeah, that's good enough. That now will be the initial velocity in the Y direction. All right, so let's focus on X. So what's a formula for your um, initial velocity in the X direction if you know the initial resultant velocity and the angle? Well, it's simply this, right? Remember, the initial velocity in the X direction will be equal to the initial velocity resultant vector multiplied by cosine of the angle, okay? And the angle here is 30, right? So this simply just works out to be the initial velocity times cosine, cosine of 30. Wonderful, now let's do y, okay? Remember your y formula here will be the initial velocity in the y direction will equal the initial velocity resultant vector multiplied by sine of the angle and therefore that angle is 30 degrees, so we can just rewrite this and plug in the 30. Okay, that's it for that. Now, let's talk about some other things we know in the x direction, so this is one formula. Remember that the acceleration in the x direction is zero. It's a free fall problem, therefore there is no acceleration in the x direction, and what that means is that the velocity is constant over time. So the initial velocity we found here is the same thing as the average velocity, all right? So the, uh, the uh, average velocity here is the same as I was mentioning as the initial velocity, okay? So let me just backtrack. And what I wanna do is I wanna use a formula now for average velocity that relates the total displacement of this ball to where the fence is divided by the time it takes to get there. All right, so essentially, this part of the problem right here where I just drew the dot, this is my initial frame of the problem, and over here will be my final frame. Okay, at the top of the fence, all right? So it takes a certain amount of time to go from the initial to the final frame, all right? The ball is traveling with a certain velocity in the X direction, the initial velocity in the X, and it has to cover the 10 meters, right, in the X direction. So therefore, when I use this formula, the average velocity in the X direction should equal the displacement in the X direction divided by time. Now, as I said, I can just take this value and plug it on in because they're the same. So I have my uh, initial velocity, multiplied by cosine of 30 will equal the x displacement of 10 divided by t. Now solve this thing for t. Right, the reason why we're gonna do it, you'll see in a minute. Okay, I've done a whole bunch of problems, also prior problems in this chapter that deal with the same technique. So you might start to begin to see a pattern. Okay, great, so that's time. And that's all that we know about the uh, x-axis. So now let's worry about the y-axis. All right, so now I have a height here, right? This is a Y displacement. Initially, it's starting at this height. It's ending at that height. It's a difference of two meters, and it's positive because it's starting low and ending high. So I know that I have a change in Y of equal to of two meters, okay? Um, what else do we know? 
We know the acceleration in the y direction is negative 9.80 meters per second squared because it's a free fall problem. Um, we know the initial velocity right in the y direction. We don't know it as a number, but we know it as a formula here. Okay. We don't know the final velocity in the y direction. And it also takes a certain amount of time to go from the initial state to the final state. Now realize that the time in this problem in the y dimension is the same as the time in the x dimension because I had the same initial and final frames. So what that means is that if I can create an equation now uh, that involves my y components and time, then what I can do is substitute this value on in for that time. So that's what I'm going to look to do. So to relate all these uh, things that we know here, I'm going to choose equation number two on the upper right hand side. All right. So let me now write this on the right hand side down here. So we have now change in y will equal the initial velocity in the y direction multiplied by time plus one half of the acceleration in the y dimension times time squared. Okay, the delta y we said was two. The initial velocity in the y dimension, all right, is this thing right here. So I'm just gonna substitute that on in. We found that already, right? So the initial velocity times the sine of 30 multiplied now by time plus one half times negative 9.80 times time squared. Just leave it t squared. Okay, great. So that's that. All right, now what I want to do is now I want to combine these two formulas. All right, so I'm going to take my time value here that I solved for in the x dimension and now plug it in for time in my y dimension because they are the same time. Okay, so now let's do that. So we have, uh, let me draw a little line straight down here so we draw a little divider there. So now we have, <clears throat> so it's going to be 2 is equal to the initial velocity times the sine of 30. Now t is 10 over, eh, let me try to squeeze it in a little more, 10 over initial velocity cosine of 30. Okay, plus now 1 half times negative 9.80 is negative, right, negative 4.90 then times time squared. So this is 10 over initial velocity, cosine 30, all squared. Okay, let's start doing some math now. Cancel the initial velocities, right? And now all of this, these are numbers, right? Sine of 30, 10, and cosine of 30. They're all numbers. There's no variable there, so we can solve that. Let's just plug it into the calculator. So we have 2 equal to, so simply do sine of 30 times 10 divided by cosine of 30. So we get 5.77. Also remember, 5.77. Also remember that sine of over a certain angle of 30 and cosine divided by cosine of 30 is the same thing as tangent of 30. All right? And we've seen that before in prior problems as well. So now let's uh, distribute the squared term, essentially, to the terms in the parentheses. So this is really 10 squared over the initial velocity squared times cosine 30, and that's squared. Okay, so we have a number here, a number here, and a number here. So let's combine all those terms now. So I get 2 is equal to 5.77 minus, so we get 4.9 times 10 squared divided by cosine of 30 squared. So just make sure that you have your parentheses right here, cosine of 30, and then just square that result. Okay, so I got a value of 653. So this will be 600, 653 all over the initial velocity squared. All right, let me just do a quick check on that. Just want to make sure, since I'm making up the problem, the only answer you're going to have is the answer I give, right? So let's just make sure that we are good here. Oop, I just, uh, let's see. I might have just plugged it in wrong. Let me just double check. Oh, no, that, no, 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 I did it right, sorry. So it's times 10 squared divided by then. Yeah, no, that's right. Okay, good, so we're good. So this is definitely correct. So now, um, look at this. I have one equation here with only one unknown. I love that because that means we can solve, right? So let's subtract this 5.77 on over, minus 5.77, ran out of room there, but that's okay. So now simply take two minus 5.77. We get a value of negative three, negative 3.77, and that will equal now negative 653 over the initial velocity squared. Simply switch the numerator and denominator here. 
So I get the initial velocity squared equaling negative 653 divided by now negative 3.77. So let's plug that into the calculator, negative 653 divided by negative 3.77. We get a value of 173, right? So the initial velocity squared is equal to 173. Simply take the square root of both sides, okay? Now remember here, when you take the square root, you always get a positive and negative answer. All right, so when we take the square root of 173, we really get a value of plus or minus 13.2. Uh, 13.2, .2, and that's in meters per second. Which value should we accept? Well, remember, this initial velocity, go back to my picture, the initial velocity is a resultant vector. Um, so all resultant vectors will have uh, positive values to them, um, just because they, they're not in a particular pure x or pure y dimension. All right, so simply just get rid of the signs here and we'll just leave it as, and I'll move this a little closer, that the initial velocity here will equal 13.2. So that's, that's the answer, all right? So that's our answer here, the initial velocity would have to be 13.2 meters per second if it's released at an angle of 30 degrees and this two meter high fence is located 10 meters away from the point of release, all right? And, uh, and that's all guys. All right. So thanks for tuning in. I hope this helped. Please remember to subscribe and I'll see you in the next lesson.